the bell icon to turn on notifications. In creating your analytic workflow, you might be required to blend your data from different data sources to get the information that you need. To join data sources successfully, you need to have a designated relationship between data sets. Once that is established, a row of data in one input can be associated to a row of data in another input. In doing so, we will be using the Join tool in Altrix. The Join tool combines two inputs based on common fields between the two tables. You can also join two data streams based on record position. In this example, we will use two sample data sets of a casino. The first are the demographics containing a unique user ID and other demographic information, while the other is their game information that is aggregated to a daily level. This includes the user ID date and their total stakes, winning, and bets per day. Let's add in a join tool from the join palette to blend the two data sources. The join tool has two input anchors, left indicated by the letter L and right indicated by the letter R. Connect the demographics input to the left anchor and then connect the user daily aggregation to the right anchor. It also has three output anchors marked with L, J, and R. In the configuration window, we have two ways of associating data. First is by record position. Second is by specific field. We will discuss how to join the data by a specific field first. Select the radio button of the join by specific field. From the phrase itself, we will need to have a specific field or column on both data sets that match each other. These are usually the primary and secondary keys used in your tables and data sources. This key should be present on both the data sources. In our example, we have the user ID on both data sets. Do take note that this key you will be using is required to be a string. Specify the user ID as a matching field on the left and right inputs of the configuration tool. The column name on the right input will automatically populate if it has the same field name. We also have the option to add more columns as matching keys to make the join more restrictive. This means that every time an ID from the left matches with that of the right, it will horizontally align the data in the output. We have a small Venn diagram in this tool to help us understand what the output will eventually look like. The left output will be data from the left input that did not have any match when we used the keywords. Same as with the right output anchor. This will only output data from the right data set that doesn't have any matches. The J or join output anchor outputs the join data, meaning these are the rows that have matching keys from both the left and right input. Below the diagram is an embedded select window. It works the same way as that of the usual select tools configuration window. Same with the select tool, you can deselect, rename, and sort the fields by how you want the output to look. This is useful to remove the duplicates in the field name during the join. The duplicate field name is highlighted and has the prefix right underscore. Let's deselect the duplicates to remove them from the output data stream. Add a browse on each of the output anchors. A shortcut for this is by clicking the tool where you want to connect the browse. Then press Control and Shift and B. This will add a browse tool for each output anchor. Then run the workflow. We can see that there was data on both left and right anchors that did not match. On the left output, we have 444 users that do not have daily aggregations, while on the right output, we have 64,789 daily records that did not have a matching user. On the join output, we have 1,675,407 records that matched, meaning we now have its daily aggregation data total blended with the customer demographic. Now let's try joining by position. In this example, we have two small data sets, the first of which contains the name, customer ID, gender, and join date, while the second one has the name and their first purchase. Connect the first data set 
to the left input anchor of the join tool and the second to the right input anchor. Then on the join tools configuration window, select the join by record position. Let's also deselect the duplicate names on the embedded select tool. Deselect the first and last name from the right. Add browse tools on the output, then run the workflow. On the J output anchor, we can observe that the join tool merged the left and the right datasets horizontally. This is because joining based on position assumes that line 1 on the left is to be matched with line 1 of the right dataset. If you are absolutely sure that the positions of the rows of both of your datasets are correct, then you can use this method to quickly produce the results that you need. Aside from using the join tool, we can also stack various data streams on top of one another by using a union tool. In comparison to a join tool, which blends data horizontally, the union tool stacks incoming data stream vertically by appending the data source on top of one another based on either a matching column, positions, or upon manual alignment. This method can help you save time from having to work on each data set separately and allows you to create a more dynamic workflow. We will make use of the Union tool in this tutorial. The Union tool is used to combine two or more datasets into a single data stream. In this example, we are going to blend data from three different data files, a CSV, an Excel file, and a tab delimited text file. Drag a Union tool from the Join palette into the canvas. The tool has one input anchor and one output anchor. However, the Union tool's input anchor is different from those found on many other tools in Designer. Its input anchor is made up of multiple arrows to indicate that this tool can accept multiple incoming data streams. The first data stream connected to the tool will be the template that determines the output column names for the rest of the files you will add. Let's connect the CSV file to the union tool. The connection line has a number one on it to signify that this is the first data stream that will be entered into the tool. You can specify the order later once we configure the union tool. Now let's connect the Excel file and the text file. You can also edit the name of the connections to easily identify the source by clicking the connection and typing in a name or number in the configuration box. In the configuration window, the union tool has a drop-down which shows the three ways you can vertically align the data. Let's also try auto config by name first. When using auto configuration by name, Altrix will combine or stack data based on the identical field names of the connected datasets. So make sure to check the field names of each dataset before using this method. There is also a configurable message if any of the fields have a different field name. On the configuration window, under auto config by name, there is another drop down that lets you choose if a mismatched field name is found. It can either show an error, a warning, or an ignore. An error stops the process and will show an error in the results window. A warning will continue the process and will show an error. An ignore will also continue the process and will not show any errors. You can also set it to output all fields, including the mismatched field name, or just output the field names that are aligned on the data sets. The next configuration is by position. If you selected this method, the values will be combined based on the arrangement or order of fields regardless of their field name. In this case, it is important that the order of the columns in the inputs match before entering the union tool. You can still configure the properties when fields differ in this section. The last method is to manually configure fields and this is extremely useful if you find that the field names of all the datasets are not reliable for aligning the value. This lets you manually configure which fields align by selecting the field and using the left and right arrows. You can also automatically arrange the fields shown here by either position or name by selecting them from the drop-down. The last setting is for the order of the data. In the output order, enable the specific output order. You can select a connection number and move it above or below the data set by using the arrow buttons. Do keep in mind that this might cause slower performance upon running the workflow. Now add a browse tool 
and run the workflow. The results window now shows the 3,000 records that we combined using the union tool from each data source files that have 1,000 records. The order of the data was based on the output order that we had set earlier. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.